All right, well, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we're going to go over general workflow of the geotechnical tools in Studio 5.0 for high wall structural, structural analysis. And we're going to start with a Res 8 scan, and this was taken uh, from a MapTech 8820 uh, scanner. And we are going to go through some tools using a spherical surface, extract discontinuities, uh, create stereo nets, uh, create rose diagrams, and do some kinematic analysis from this scan here. So like I said, this is a Res 8 scan, and you can see that I cleaned up this scan just so that it shows the bench face only. And another thing I did with this scan was come up to color and set it up so that it is a photographic overlay on the scan. And the reason we do this is that when we create the spherical triangulation, to have the image overlaid on the surface, we want to have the scan itself in photographic first. So let's go ahead and get started with the spherical triangulation. Uh, you want to have your scan highlighted and come up to model spherical triangulation. And automatically with the scan highlighted, you should have the spherical origin point already selected. And we want to move the look point perpendicular to the strike of the bench face. So I just selected the crest of the bench face here. And I have a maximum edge length for our triangles at 5 feet. And we can go ahead and hit OK. So now we have a spherical triangulation that was created and put in our surfaces container. You can see this created a pretty nice surface here. The reason that we do a spherical surface instead of a topographic surface is that uh, the spherical shows detail and overhangs. Um, it's similar to topographic, but it's a 2D surface on a sphere instead of a 2D surface uh, in an XY plane. So I'll show you a comparison really quickly just of the same scan with a topographic triangulation. And you can see how it did not, does not show the structures well at all. All right, let's get started using the geotechnical tools. So the first thing we want to do is do a query dip and strike. So we'll go ahead and make sure our select vertices is on. And just make a selection uh, on the surface itself. You can see we have some pretty dominant trends here. So we'll just make a quick selection, and then do query, dip, and strike. So you can see that we have the, the strike and dip of the, structure, of the structure we selected. And to save this, you can either hit Enter, or you can click on Complete here at the bottom. And once you've done that, it populates in the geotechnical container under Discontinuity. And you can really relabel this to whatever you like. So the next tool I'd like to show you is the extract discontinuities. So we'll do the same thing. Make sure we have a, the select vertices on. We'll select the plane we're interested in. Come up to geotechnical, extract discontinuities. And you can see that it, it has automatically selected all the structures within the surface that have the angle threshold within 10 degrees and minimum and max, maximum area within our uh, user settings here. And another cool feature is that uh, it shows you how many planes are detected on the surface before you save it into the geotechnical folder. We can go ahead and hit OK. And it now put that container in the geotechnical container with all the discontinuities, 109 of them. So one thing you'll notice with these discontinuities is that there's uh, some overlap. There's structures that uh, obviously are the same same plane that it has recognized as multiple structures. And you know, as a geologist, you know this is not the case. So what we can do to fix that is come up to merge discontinuities. And what we're doing here is selecting the maximum distance spacing uh, 
for these discontinuities and anything closer than this setting uh, will merge together and within this maximum angle difference. So we can go ahead and hit OK. And then within the discontinuities folder that we originally created, you can see that it merged a lot of those discontinuities into one. And we can recolor those discontinuities so that they're all uniform like they were before. Another thing you probably notice that there's no annotation on the structure. So we'll go ahead and do that by going up to color, surface appearance, and change this to annotated. Now we have annotations on the structures. You can get kind of busy doing this, so I'm just going to leave them off for the time being. Uh, the next thing I'd like to go over is color dip and strike. But before I do that, I'd like to make a copy of the surface that we have here so that we're not overlaying uh, the, the color onto our original surface. So we'll go ahead and paste that in our original surfaces container and we'll rename it. Oh, let's do strike uh, color by strike of spherical. Go ahead and close this out. Open up our new surface. It's just a copy of the original. Come up to Geotechnical, Color, Dip, and Strike. And this is where you can select Dip Direction, Strike, or Dip to color your surface. So we're going to do Strike. And you can also limit by Dip Range or the Bearing, um, Dip Direction or Strike, if you have a specific structure that you're interested in viewing uh, by color. So I'll show you how this looks here. Go ahead and hit OK. And you can now see the structures in a visual format uh, color-coded by their orientation. So we'll open up our original spherical surface with our discontinuities on it. And we will go to StereoNet. And you have some options here. You can create an equal area or equal angle stereo net, as well as uh, equatorial or polar or none. So we'll just do an equal area and equatorial stereo net. You want to make sure your discontinuities are selected when you're doing this. Hit OK. And under the geotechnical tab, it created a stereo net with the discontinuities that we had originally selected in the stereo net. I also would like to show you, I'll go back to our original spherical here. I'll create another stereo net, and this time we'll do scale poles by area. And this is a nice feature. Oh, let's say redo that. I'll do equatorial equal area, scale of poles by area. And you can see in this stereo net that we have the structures uh, set up so that uh, um, you can get a visual representation of the pol poles according to their area. So the larger, uh, area, larger the area of the structure, the larger the node. And from that, we can go ahead and create contours around our poles. And you can see here that we have the stereo net selected and these are uh, user selectable percentage bandwidth uh, to represent the data concentration and we'll just leave these as default and go ahead and OK just so you can see how this works and now you have uh, contours surrounding your poles 
All right, I want to go back to our surface really quickly and show you how to create um, structures, uh, create uh, discontinuities from horizontal structures. So we have our surface here. And you can see that we have some bedding here, and there's not a whole lot of relief for the structure. So it would be hard to use the query, uh, query dip and strike tool or the extract discontinuities for this. So what we're going to do is create a plane, a fitted plane. And to do this, we'll come up to Model, Fitted Plane. And we will select manually select points along this plane to create it. And you're going to want to hold shift down while you're doing this to make multiple selections. And we'll use no constraint and best points. Hit OK. And you can see it created a plane along that horizontal structure. And now to get a orientation on that plane, we can go up to the CAD folder where it put that plane and change this to your point select to select facets. Come back to Geotechnical, do query dip and strike, and click on the plane, and you now have your strike and dip of that plane. And this is the same as the query dip and strike for other structures and when you just hit enter and it populates in a geotechnical container. We'll put our discontinuities back in there. And the last thing I want to cover under the geotechnical tab is, um, well, we'll go through a few things. Rows diagram, uh, kinematic analysis, a set window, and add plane. Um, first we can talk about the add plane. And with our stereo net pulled up here, let me get that one. You can see that when we select the discontinuity set, it will add a plane based on those the orientation of those poles or a great circle based on those poles to your stereo net. So we'll go ahead and close that out because we're going to do a kinematic analysis and that will be on the kinematic analysis. Um, also want to show you the set window and with your discontinuity selected you can see a window created around the discontinuity set that you have selected. Um, this is just a representation uh, based on the trend plunge and span of the uh, structures um, just as a visual representation. Now we'll create a rose diagram and you just want to have your discontinuity selected when you're doing this. And you can create a rose diagram off of strike, dip, or trend. Uh, we'll stick with our theme and just go off of strike. And then you can also select your Terzaghi weighting if you so choose. Uh, if you want to use the measurement orientation to counteract the sampling bias. And since we really only have one structure, structure set or discontinuity set, we really only see the trend for one. Uh, we also have our horizontal structure in there. Um, but it's a very useful tool. And then we'll go ahead and let's do our kinematic analysis now. And to do our kinematic analysis for this structure, we first want to get a, a rough orientation on the bench face itself. And we can do that by selecting the bench face itself and using the query dip and strike tool 
to give us an orientation on it. So we have a, a strike of 99 degrees and a dip of 73 in the area that I selected. So then we can come back to our stereo net and go ahead and enter that information for slope dip. We had 73, slope dip direction, we had a strike of 99, so we'll go ahead and uh, put that as 189, 90 degrees opposite of the strike. And then for this structure, uh, we will be using slip limit and lateral limits. And the slip limit is a representation of the plane at which uh, friction slippage will occur. And I have this set up at, uh, at 40 degrees, typically between 35 and 45 degrees. And then our lateral limit set up at uh, 15 degrees. And the lateral limits identifies planes in the same general direction as the main slope face dip direction. Uh, planes outside this, uh, they don't usually slip. So you can see we're right on the edge of the window here of uh, poles that could potentially fail. That would be in this area I'm highlighting. So then since we have our destination stereo net already selected, you can go ahead and hit OK. And now your stereo net has your set window, your poles, your contours, and all your kinematic analysis in one stereo net. And uh, the last thing I want to cover is actually the help menu for kinematic analysis. It's a very useful tool. Um, shows you uh, all the components and definitions for uh, everything that you'll see in the kinematic analysis itself, as well as the type of failure and the procedure used in studio to create a stereo net for the type of failure you see. So that's kinematic analysis uh, really quickly. And the last thing that I'd like to show is uh, exporting discontinuities. So you just select your discontinuity container and go to File Export. And there's several formats to export this. You can select it as a discontinuity CSV. And you can also do a custom text file in which you can select your output format. So you could, if you didn't want dip direction in there, you could go ahead and ignore these columns. And uh, I thank you guys for being with us today.